ladies and gentlemen. Josephine Wright, this woman that spent the last part of her life fighting a development company because they wanted to take land that's been in her family since the Civil War. That's how she left this world, fighting. Well, she won. It's really a shame that she was not here to see her victory. Her family gets to keep the land and her home. But Tyler Perry is constructing a brand new, much larger home on the property. Now, I don't know if the home is finished now or not, but I know the construction, you know, when she passed, he said they were moving forward with the construction. So this is truly sad and I'm glad for the victory, but I'm sad she is not around to see it. But I hope that development, land development company that put this woman through all this hell, I pray for your destruction. I really do. So let's get into it. So Josephine Wright, she caught the media's attention for pushing against developers trying to steal her property. Now, this woman had a lot of acres and they wanted to give her $30,000. Now, I don't know what home can she buy for that amount in today's economy. And they know that land was worth a hell of a lot more than what they offer. They always play these little silly games. And this was on Hilton Head. And this poor woman spent her last days fighting to protect her family's ancestral property in South Carolina. And they were trying to take her home. Josephine died just two months ago. It really has not been that long. So this is after her um, parting from this world. Her fight is finally over. Bailey Point's investment, the construction company that was trying to steal her land, has settled with Wright's family members after it initially sued for owners. Uh, they sued to try to get ownership of her property. So she sued them and then they sued her to take the property. The settlement concedes that what Wright's family owns the property in the middle of Bailey Point's planned 29 acre neighborhood, according to uh, South Carolina Public Radio, the company cannot contact Wright's family about purchasing the land and there will be privacy fences erected between Wright's family land and the new construction. Why couldn't you just do that in the first place? You knew this woman didn't want to sell. When she told you from the jump, she did not want to sell. You could have came up with that idea then. You could have put the private fence, you know, between whatever 29 acres they have and her property. But instead of doing that, you put this woman through all kinds of unnecessary hell. There's a 94 year old woman. I like y'all to do this to a woman that looked just like you. You wouldn't dare do it and you know it. So <clears throat> right story of an elderly woman pushing back against a development company captivated the nation and it was an outcry from people such as Tyler Perry who promised to build right a new house from people uh, you know and also Snoop Dogg Kyrie Irving both donated uh ten thousand and forty thousand dollars in a GoFundMe that was set up for her and they were able to get $350,000.
Wright, who survived by four children, 40 grandchildren, dozens of great, great grandchildren, and her late husband, Samuel Wright Jr., moved from New York City to Hilton Head Island some 30 years ago, seeking a place of peace and tranquility, Jonesville, the neighborhood into which they moved was named after Caesar Jones, a black Civil War veteran and formerly enslaved man who had bought property in the area immediately after the Civil War. Wright's family, who were Gullah Geechee, has owned 1.8 acres of land on the island since around that time. Following the Civil War, Gullah Geechee people living on Hilton Head owned the majority of the land. By 1880, Hilton Head was about 98% Black. Now Hilton Head is about 77% White. And that's because they've been taking land from the Gullah Geechee now for a few decades. They've been stealing their lands. And, you know, and putting all these new developments on there and they know the people there can't afford that. They can't afford these prices for these new homes. Gullah Geechee land ownership in Hilton Head has decreased by 70% since 1995, according to Greenville News, with descendants only owning 8% of the island. Wow, they went from owning, the Gullah Geechee went from owning 98% of Hilton Head Island. Now they only got 8%. That's crazy. That's crazy. By 2022, Bailey Point received town approval to build a new, in a new neighborhood. But you notice, just like I told y'all before, if you see melanated people there, that's where they decide they wanna build. They never uproot their own people, just us. So <clears throat> they were trying to construct 147 housing units, which would surround Wright's property. The company propositioned Wright to buy her land, but she refused. And yeah, they didn't offer her no good money anyway. She couldn't go nowhere and purchase another home on the money they offered. Last February, um, it filed a lawsuit against her alleging that Wright's home encroached on its land. The town refused to issue a certificate of compliance to Bailey Point until it reached an agreement with Wright. After refusing to sell, Wright experienced bully you know, bullying, intimidation, and harassment. Yeah, the things they've been doing for 400 years. That's what she experienced. They were littering on her home, all over her property, cutting her shrubs, and just doing anything they can that they thought, you know, she would fold and give in to them, but she didn't. She didn't. Said she said the company even tried to go around her by negotiating with other family members. They want this whole thing, Wright told the Island Packet last year. I guess that's their newspaper, the Island Packet. I made a little joke. I said to one of my children, maybe I better watch where I'm going. Who knows what could happen to a little old lady? Well, that's not a joke. You know, that's actually very serious, especially when you see them harassing you. So, in the place of historic Gullah Geechee homes, ancestral sites, and sacred spaces, such as burial grounds, are now golf courses. Yeah, well, that's what they did to all the slave. Uh, cemeteries. It should be a lot of slave cemeteries in this country, by the way, but they either blew them up, put parking lots on top of them, build developments on top of them. So you don't even know that they are there. 
So they did everything they could to hide them. And maybe a handful of them are still around. And you know, that can't be right because even when you go in the census, you know, the one I looked at, it was 2 million in the South during the time I was looking, you know? So how could it just be these few black cemeteries, you know, where our enslaved forefathers are? No, you hid them. You build on top of them. You blew them up. So anyway, so she's saying that I'm not, yeah, the ancestral burial sites are now golf courses, condos, country clubs, most of which are frequent by wealthy white retirees. Black Hilton Head residents have long tried to fight the ongoing gentrification and takeover of their land that began, they said it began back in 1957 when these them folks start taking over the island, 1957, with the opening of Sea Pines, a 5,200 acre gated community which oversees four golf courses. So that's when they first start stealing land from these Gullah Geechee people that have been there since the Civil War. I'm not surprised. Wright spent the last year of her life on the offense, fighting to maintain her home. Now her family inherits her land, but not the battle to keep it. So under the newly created Josephine Wright Foundation, her relatives plan to help others in similar situations. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's a really good thing to do. Y'all gonna have to tell me what you think about this story. I'm glad it's a victory, but I wish he could have lived long enough to see that victory. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.